while driving his cousin home, he tried to avoid a deer in the middle of the road, overcorrected and flipped into this ditch right behind me. Yeah, it's hot out here, but unlike me, these players actually have to battle through it because what's at stake for them is a possible scholarship offer from a school they covet the most. In the 17 years he's been associated with Longwood women's soccer, not even he was expecting this. Yeah! Welcome to the Sports Wrap, I'm Nathan Epstein. Training camp this season for the Redskins has been anything but ordinary. Eight hours have gone by, which means there's only 16 hours left for Ryan to reach the 100 mile mark. What may come to mind are Michael Vick, the 95 interception that beat UVA, or maybe even the 2000 Sugar Bowl. And I'm joined by head coach Kristen Caruso of the women's basketball team and uh, coach you guys preparing for Campbell with Every great program has a beginning. Every basketball powerhouse a foundation built over time. It's only been three years since the Lancers of Longwood University were officially declared Division I. But with every practice, every weight room session, every win, a foundation is exactly what they're hoping to put in place. Our team is really like transitioned from from that small team that everybody used to beat up on to you know the team that can go out and go play against Kansas for their first game. So it's been a positive experience. We feel as though we're just as good as anyone we play. Yeah, the team might be a little more athletic. Yeah, the team might be a little bigger, stronger, faster. But we feel as though we can compete with anybody. When I first got here, we didn't feel as though we could do that. As early as 2004, Longwood battled with everything Division I has to offer, traveling to venues from Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois to Wake Forest, Maryland, and Kansas. When we get a chance to play in venues like Kansas and Virginia Tech and Maryland, we're going to treat those to some degree as our NCAA tournament games. When we have opportunities, uh, great home court environments like we'll have against James Madison and everybody else during the year, we'll treat those as high profile league games. We beat a couple teams last year, like High Point, and we stuck up with a couple Division I teams, a couple great teams, and they don't want to play us anymore. So I, we, we must be moving up. Teams not wanting to play us anymore. Mike Gillian began as Longwood's head coach in 2003. Since that time, he's seen his team grow from 1 and 30 in 2005 to 17 and 14 after their 2008 2009 campaign, including a 29 and 10 mark on their home floor of Willett Hall since 2007. Be ready because when it's home, we, we come to play when it's home. We ha we've had GW here, we've had Liberty here, we've had James Madison here. We're going to have a Big East team in here. We get a couple more of those games. Well, th those are opportunities where you can see it. Now let's reach out and see if we can grab onto it. As a Division I program without a conference to call home, an NCAA tournament bid may not be in the Lancers' immediate future. For now, the goals remain in place. Our objective is to win every game. You always aim for the top, but you, you can't get to the top without starting from the bottom. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta build, you gotta work hard, you gotta go to the weight room, and that's definitely what we're doing. So we're headed in the right direction. You know, we, we wanna put this school on the map and we wanna gradually get better. So every year, you know, if it's improving the record, if it's, you know, being able to take on a stronger strength of schedule, whatever it is, we just want to make Longwood the, the future version of Duke. So one day we, we should be in their shoes. All the work that we've done putting this program together is paying off, but man, we still have a long way to go. There still are so many things that can be done here. So many pots of gold at the end of the rainbow, if you want to call it that. We, we've just got to keep doing what we're doing, keep progressing, knowing that one day we'll, we'll get there. Reporting from Longwood University, this is Nathan Epstein. <laughs> On the hot Sunday before the first day of classes at Longwood University, pregame for a women's soccer game took on the appearance of one for a Division I football game. Oh, this is wonderful. I love the enthusiasm that the students have. The, um, this is great that they were able to come out, that they took the time to come out the day before classes get started. It just is absolutely amazing. Really, really excites me that they are, are willing to do that. Face paint, banners, rally chants, and a raucous crowd filled the streets of Longwood and Farmville for the game or the greatest athletics march ever.
The event started with a pep rally in Willett Hall, where the crowd yelled and cheered in preparation for the women's soccer team's matchup with the University of Richmond Spiders later that night. Women's head coach Todd Dyer is an alumni of Longwood University and graduated in 1993, and he says in the 17 years he's been associated with Longwood women's soccer, not even he was expecting this. Yeah! It's unbelievable. Uh, today when the girls got off the bus walking to the gymnasium, you could hear the crowd inside before we even got there. And just the energy, the volume, the Longwood spirit was insane. I think we all had goosebumps. On stage, pumping up the crowd were students, members of the SGA, Longwood faculty, and even Farmville town manager Jerry Spates made an appearance. The fans then marched from campus up 4th Street to the athletics complex for the game. I just really enjoyed the, you know, the atmosphere, the enthusiasm, the whole Longwood community, you know. I was really impressed to see the number of people. 1,500 plus people out here. I've never seen 1,500 people in a soccer game. Many faculty have said they hope this starts a tradition that will last for years to come. This is absolutely amazing. I hope that this type of energy just continues uh, throughout the entire year. This is Nathan Epstein for the Rotunda Show. It may not mean much considering the Cubs are miles back in the division standings. Don't tell that to the fans of this rivalry. The Cubs and the Cardinals squaring off in St. Louis today, and look who it is in the owner's box. Tony La Russa serving his second in a two-game suspension from last week's brawl. Top second, Chris Carpenter facing Aramis Ramirez, and Ramirez says you're going to have to change the scoreboard because that's gone. Solo shot ties the game at one, top third now. Derek Lee, where have you been, big fella? He sends a shot out of the park, and the Cubs lead 3-1. He has been virtually nowhere. Bottom fifth, Carlos Zambrano on the mound with the cards threatening. He gets the grounder from Matt Holliday to end that. Cubs win 3-2. Down south we go where the Red Hot Orioles took on the Rays. Top third, no score. That is until Adam Jones shows up. A three-run homer to the left. That puts the O's up 3-0. But the big play in this one came in the bottom of the fourth inning. Rays down 3-1. Kelly Shopik up to bat with the bases loaded and he takes care of that. The grand slam for Shopik, only the second of his career. Rays win 7-3. I'm Nathan Epstein and that's the Sports Wrap. Thank you for watching.